Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of What Do You Call It? Podcast. I'm your host, GP. I hope everyone is having a great weekend, because time of recording, it is the weekend. There you go. Today's guest is the wrestling engineer. Please give up for Ronnie Knox. How are you doing today? You all good? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Can't really complain. Um, Set to right. It's cooling down in terms of weather. Not that we talked about it before, Gordon. Um, but in no, general, no, um, <laughs> I can't complain. I can't complain. Um, and I'm happy to get to talk to you uh, about a match that you have next week because I'll actually be there in attendance. So that should be good. But I'm actually going to kickstart the interview by talking about the upcoming match against Livy Grace, uh, Coliseum Pro Wrestling. So it'll be a contest of power against technique. God, now, now I feel like I'm a promoter now. Um, you're actually victorious in your last uh, appearance there. But I want to ask you, as I'm looking forward to it as well, and you're no stranger to your opponent, but what's going to be your thought process going into this match next week? Uh, so I feel like it's no surprise that like any time anyone sees me with anyone in the ring, it's always going to be um, quote an uphill battle mm. just because of um, my petite stature I will say and so anytime yeah it's always going to be I'm always going to be just fighting from the bottom essentially to try and get the win or to just try and yeah show my worth essentially and Mm. Livy Grace is um been in the industry for a long long time yeah and yeah I am no stranger to her I have wrestled her quite a few times and this is just um match uh like battle number six or whatever in our I'm guessing storied history that will I'm pretty sure we'll have more matches after this but what's unique about it is because she I feel like in recent times has started to get not more respect but people actually get to see I've actually seen oh she's really like Mm. you know she's a threat now and more attention also Exactly, yeah. And now also the fact that, you know, I've got a bit of, I feel like I've I've stepped ahead. I've stepped, I've got a little, no, a little bow in my toolbox per se or in my belt. But um, I feel like, you know, you know, I've got some things and I've got, I've got some things that I want to prove to people. And just also maybe it's to myself as well, but I feel like this is another Expect the unexpected, essentially. Don't think that uh, you see us two and you, you're you going to have a sure winner there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot more things that we know each other so well as well because we've had so many matches. And but That's uh, what's going to make yeah. it interesting, though, the fact that you do know each other so well. Therefore, you're probably going to have to mix it up and try and not be predictable so she knows what you're going to do and maybe the same for her as well, sort of counter each other a bit more. And that's what makes it exciting. Literally, yeah, exactly. You don't know what's gonna what we're gonna bring to the table, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, what skills we've got. Obviously, I've got my technical skills. She's got her strength, and but then also we know each other's move sets. So it's about pulling out the things that are unexpected and seeing who can you know outdo each other, mm-hmm. also who can get the upper hand. So yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. But I'm looking forward to it. I know it's going to be a fight, that's for sure. So, yeah, it's going to be good. good combat there. Yeah. Crossing Pro Wrestling, also shout out to them, um, making a name for themselves. I know you was actually on the debut show, wasn't you? Yeah, I think I've done literally all of their shows since up until you know this one coming up now. Mm-hmm. So, I like to say that yeah, I have my not to sound braggy in a way, but bragging here that I feel like brag I've away seen, you're the yeah, guest yeah yeah <laughs> well, I will actually yeah no I've seen um I've seen it the promotion in all its um mm. in all its um facets I've seen it from the start I've seen it to where they are now and I've seen the growth and I've also seen the girls and the wrestlers coming through some of them have been back some of them haven't but I've always been a consistent thing and I feel like mm. it should be in terms of the women's division essentially it's my locker room I see I see the talent I see the people who are like willing to put in the work and show and yeah show who they are who they are in the ring and really 
I feel like if anyone, I should get first opportunity, whoever mm. decides they think that they should come up for that promotion since I have been there in the from the mm. beginning. I wouldn't even so, say that's a cocky attitude. I think uh, you have every right. You've been there since the beginning. You've got, you're willing to work with anyone. The backbone of their women's division, essentially. Absolutely, yeah. And like, it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just continually like, even when I first started there, compared to where I am now, I'd say I'm a different performer and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to be a different performer as time goes by. But that's just evolution. But I just want the best. I want the best women in that in this promotion. I want the best mm -hmm. competitors. I want to challenge myself and I don't want to be complacent and just be in one box and happy. I want mm -hmm. to grow and evolve and add more like branches essentially to my books and my little yes, you are the wrestling engineer yes. but no i respect that mentality I mean, of course i'm gonna keep doing that in yeah <laughs> i completely understand that mentality and i think i respect i really respect that and i don't think anyone would actually label you as cocky or anything i think they'd be like she just wants the best and she wants to improve and continue to improve but she she wants to be established as well and she's been with this company and been various promotions as well which i will touch on yeah. um briefly but i actually want to establish what actually made you a wrestling fan in the first place? When did what's the first match, if you do recall, uh, watching uh, before you kind of became a pro wrestler? So I remember watching, um, well, not even watching, but playing the you know SmackDown video games um, on the PlayStation. Uh, yeah, I used to play that and just think, oh, this is so cool, and, and just like play as Lita and just be like, oh yeah, I get to beat up all these people and win. Um, and then, but I never really watched wrestling from that point. I was just playing the games and then time passes and then it was just on TV one day and I thought, oh, this is this is interesting. And just like seeing the athleticism and mm. the storylines and just having a whole pot of people from different um, worlds, but somehow they, that it doesn't matter like what you look like or what what your skill set was you could still like be a champion essentially and then the more I watched it then it's just like oh yeah I'll, I could I can do that I can do that I can be better than that and so then you just go down the rabbit hole of trying yeah. to find where this where's the plus where's the best place you're going to train and then you do the training and then you do the work and then sometimes things um it might be a little bit slower trajectory for you. Um, but then, yeah, you just put the work in and then eventually you have your first match. And then mm. it just, yeah, it just goes from there. And then I want to break down some what you said. Um, and I actually want to touch on the first match ever because I do find with British wrestlers, like their debut matches can be pretty hilarious when they tell the stories. Um, but I also find it quite interesting, your first ever match inside a ring. But I want to talk about when you knew when you wanted to become a wrestler. What Was there like a moment that inspired you? I know you said you've kind of fell down the rabbit hole, but was there a period like you just knew, like, I actually want to do this. I want to give it a go. Um, I don't know, maybe like going to shows, attending more shows, interacting with wrestlers, or even just like a specific match, or just, did you just know from like, not necessarily SmackDown games, but as you went on and grew up and watched it more, it was like, this has always been in the back of my mind. I want to give it a go. Yeah, I think, um, so yeah, I started watching um, wrestling um, more and more. And then I think I went to a live show, um, like a live event show. And then I just, as I was going there, I thought, you know what, I want to, you know, why not give it a try? I could, or like, yeah, I, there's a certain competitiveness in you, like, I could do better than that. And then yeah. it's like, why not actually give it a go? And then as I said before, then you go um, and find, you know, how is it actually feasible? Because I feel like if you're not in wrestling, then you don't really know how to get into it. And then it, because it's very niche, like once you're in it, you're in it. But then if you know nothing about wrestling, then you don't even really know how it exists. Mm. So then, you, yeah, you try and find out, okay, how, how do you go about and actually become a wrestler? And then you figure out there's training mm. schools and then... Wouldn't be as easy yeah, to just a wrestler yeah. like... Excuse me, how do I become a wrestler? Like, get me in. Like, <laughs> nine times. It's, yeah, it's, not, it's not even a thing because, yeah, you don't even think, is it like, where are the wrestlers? Like, apart from, like, you know, WWE at that point, it's just like, who, where are the, yeah, where are the wrestlers? Mm. And 
the UK and then as you finally like find a school then you kind of realize oh yeah there's this whole subculture of like yeah unintended but the, yeah this whole subculture of like wrestlers and wrestlers and, and wrestlers in the UK and Brit wrestling and then wrestling in Mexico Japan America and so on and so forth so yeah then just found a training school up in Leicester traveled up there trained eventually after some months I had my first match in a in a barn literally in a barn, barn. In a barn, yeah, in Leicester, it was. That's um, crazy. Like I, I, thought, yeah, I would have seen that be like America, like uh, but in Leicester, a barn. I might speak to uh, Chocolate Thunder about that one. That's, that's oh thing. yeah, I'm not sure if he was there at the time, but if you yeah speak to like <laughs> Jack Sellerstorm now or like um, H Hood, yeah, uh, they, I'm pretty sure they were there for that as well. But yeah, it was like a yeah, literally a few months later, I had a match on a barn for like a fundraiser but yeah they had wrestling on the show and then they did like a tournament style uh wrestling show but yeah performing in front of like on one side of the ring there's kids and on the other side of the ring it's like a horse's like ass in your face and just like oh yeah <laughs> this is yeah this is, i like it though it's different like yeah everyone, everyone oh, yeah, for fun. sure <laughs> definitely for sure it was different and yeah I can't say that I haven't wrestled in a barn. Maybe I have, actually. I think I have wrestled in a barn since then. But, yeah, definitely, uh, yeah, just a way to get in, get your foot in. That, that's one way of getting in. Yeah, just uh, yeah, mm. a barn, like, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's def- it's unique for sure. But it's cool, though. It's just like, imagine, like, like, doing the same venue over and over can be repetitive and boring. Stuff like that must be quite cool. And I know you've done various... Uh, promotions in the UK now, Progress, Eve, um, PWE, um, up north. And so obviously yes, you've yeah. got to see him as well. Uh, I just mentioned PWE just because of good company and I like some of the, the talent there as well. And I think the north mm-hmm. is really, since the pandemic, I believe they're kind of making a real good name for themselves in terms of wrestling. Because I know south was a real, a real big hotspot before the pandemic. Like all the international stars came, but the north really established themselves now, I have to say. Yeah, I I feel like even now, like every um every so often you look online and you see oh a new promotion just opening up, whether that mm. is the north or the south. But it's only good because it's just like more, hopefully more work and more yeah, more chances to try and like, you know, show who you are, show what you can do and just stand out from like all the wrestlers that are that are just, you know, on the scene right now and there's a lot and there's a lot of mm. Um, things that people can offer and um, you know you just want to stand up from the crowd and do something that not everyone you see is doing I know some people um, got it about WWE NXT UK being you know I think the correct I don't think the correct term was cancelled but basically they stopped doing it you know and I know some wrestlers like Josh but at the same time I think that was great for British wrestling because Mm. Those talents that had that exposure now, the national exposure on the television as well, can bring that to those companies, even the ones I've mentioned, or like these new up and coming companies, and then they can work with other people that might be less known and just British wrestling thrives again, if that makes sense. Oh, for sure. No, I definitely agree. Even like yeah, it's shame it's not there anymore, but at least now the competitors who got to work mm-hmm. there, they've got now the WWE stamp forever on yeah. their names. Yeah, as you said, they can go to different promotions, and yeah, hopefully now it's like when you're facing um, an ex NXT UK mm. st- um, superstar, it's like, oh yeah, okay, there's some credibility there. I need to like, you will almost want to up up your up your game. Yeah, you know, definitely. Okay, they mean business, but then you've also got the thing of like NXT potentially NXT Europe coming around, and then mm-hmm. it's like, okay, maybe if I can like work hard enough then I can maybe even get myself on there mm. or just like endless possibilities just going around which is only a good thing even with your match with Nina Samuels uh, not so long ago yeah um, yeah, that, was, a, that was a pretty yeah. fun match I watched that as well that's pretty good yeah was, it's she, even she always gets yeah. praise I don't, I don't think I've ever heard anything bad about it. I know like a persona in the ring and stuff but like outside the ring like everyone just adores her she's just too good she's just too good in the <laughs> every aspect it's annoying and it's just like yeah again what I was saying before it's just like she's got that um 
it's that stamp and then it's just like okay yeah i want to just get i want to yeah up my game here and even yeah after I, i'd love to have another match with her just because i feel like yeah i didn't even scratch the surface of what i could do or what we could do so yeah that's just another example but there's so many people i want to get in the ring with and, mm. yeah i definitely want to get in there with her again yeah she's an exceptional talent Who's caught your eye then at the moment that you haven't been in the ring with? Like, not even just like, I don't know if you, you know, because you have done in the gender wrestling, haven't you? So just, it doesn't necessarily have to be women, but just anyone in the UK scene um, that's caught your eye, but you've not had the chance to be in the ring with them yet. Like, um, oh, probably put your spot with that one, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's a good question because, but there's just so many, and I know yeah. later on I'm gonna like, oh, I should have said him, should have said her, or... exactly. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, again, yeah, Nina, I want to face again. Um, uh, oh gosh, um, Aisha Raymond, I think, is very talented, and I faced a few times, but yeah, happily. I'm going to face it later on. Um, intergender, because I also like like tech wrestling as well. So, yeah. I mean, that's what I do. So I want to, like, I would love to, like, face, like, a Joe, Red, Joe Redman or, like, a Jack Sellerstorm in a, like, big... That's a like, great part. I've, I've only just really discovered him, like, this year, but he really has caught my eye. Just, I mean, cool look anyway, but just... Really fan, but big fan of his in ring work. Really, really good. Very talented, and yeah, very much. Uh, he's only just gonna come up from, um, yeah, just from big coming up now. Um, Liz, um, Lizzie Eva, Lizzie Eva, I'd love mm. to face her. Um, again, Rio, so many again girls from the north as well. Alexis Falcon, I want to have a match with. Load of yeah. I know some people I'm just going to forget and then... It's, yeah. it's, if, if they even pop up right, as we do speak on for a bit, just just randomly go, like, I'm just asking you about, like, your team turn thing, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, her. So what? Mm. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. You know, I, I do want to touch on that, by the way. That, that's really cool. I, we're still talking about wrestling, but I do want to give you a shout-out to Tina Turner. Um, you dress up as the um, Vault Festival, and I thought it was really cool and really accurate as well, just the hair and really, like, the fact that you did it this year and obviously she passed away uh, not long ago as well. I mean, that's pretty sad. I actually went to, um, oh, what are they called? Well, it's not her, but they're doing music. I don't know why. It's, it's really simple what they're called and I just can't think. Well, like a tri- tribute. That's the like one. A, a tribute, yeah. yeah. I, don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. The word tribute was just not popping on my brain. It's, it's not even that early. There might be another name for it as well. But yeah. I, yeah, again, it's not coming to me. So. <laughs> That's fine. We're on the same level at the moment. It's just, I'm happy with that. It's not just me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So about the team and turn. What what inspired you um, with that cosplay? I think it's really cool. But I want to hear from you. I mean, it's just it's another thing. It's just like I'm always in the workshop. I'm always like like working different things and trying to add more like nozzles and different like um, th- blueprints into my um, repertoire mm. and. Um, yeah, just Fist Club, a wrestling promotion that does have a ray drag as well as wrestling. Uh, and then um, it came up and then it was uh, the creation of uh, Rio O'Reilly, actually, who came up with uh, Tina Tanta because, yeah, just because it's a show where you can kind of do anything and then it's just, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's like a night off, isn't it? Different. Yeah, exactly. Try something different. And then I was like, oh, I like... Like You've got literally nothing to lose. Exactly. And it's just like, yeah, who doesn't want to be like, again, someone who empowers so many different facets? It's great. Like she was fucking awesome. Just like, so ahead of a time. Like, just revolutionary. Amazing performer as well. Yeah. And all shit she dealt with as well. Like, but just she overcame it, produced some absolute bangers, and, you know, left a mark on the music industry. Literally, it's just, it's, yeah. Even if I can just be like a show a small pot of like people who may not be familiar with her work, yeah. even maybe go back to and listen to her songs or catalogue or listen to mm. her story, then it's I'm really okay. so I'm trying not to like hum her music at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying not to sing it. I mean, just do do as you like, do do as you like. I, I won't I won't do it to your ears or the listeners' ears and I feel I feel bad, but I'm just like 
Hit another hit. I'm just... <laughs> it's, it's so many bangers. So many bangers. I know, I know. If um if there is anyone listening to this, by the way, that hasn't really listened to her, just and you're not doing anything this weekend and you want like an hour or two to just relax and listen to some absolute classics, Tina Turner, YouTube. There you go. Or even to lo- watch her live shows, it just oh, like, yeah. gets you riled up as well. I'm just like, yeah, just like yeah, energetic. And this is when she was like in her 40s and 50s, like she just had no and limit. Even 60s as well, yeah. literally. It's just like putting some performers today to shame. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Like a lot of half of them just like, God, I'm actually showing my age now, but like, I'm just like, back in my day. Um... <laughs> But no, it's literally a thing. You could even like look again, yeah, watching her shows, you look back and think, even if I can bring some of that to mm. what I'm doing in the ring, I'm just like how just on it and just like never getting tired and just like even through sweat and just like moving and grafting and stuff, if I can just like even still bring out even a smidgen of a performance, then it's all but inspiring and that's kind of the rate that you have to go at if you want to be the best essentially i like it i like it you get to do you get to mix two things that you like and do it in front of a crowd and puts some smiles on people's faces i like that um i'm not going to ask you what's your favorite match of all time i can imagine that being a repetitive question and just maybe um not a straightforward some i think a lot of people struggle with that because they want to name so many so that's fine but what i ask you is what have been some of your personal highlights in your wrestling career that you can recall doesn't necessarily have to be a specific match but just like even like Tina Turner stuff for example so, I don't know if there's like one particular moment just because I feel like essentially I haven't had it just yet mm-hmm. um, but I will say that over the last few months it has been nice to just work in different promotions and just face so many different people because I feel like that's something that I'm always wanted to work towards and continue to work towards as well and just just yeah getting to wrestle in different even countries yeah has always been a goal and I've only Poland. scratched the Finland. surface of that yeah Finland yeah yeah and it's just just yeah I've only just scratched the surface of that and I just want to continue mm. more doing that as well also yeah in terms of facing wrestlers smashing Mike uh, it's just to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. a friend of mine yeah uh, we will get in the ring together he's cool he's night. cool he doesn't get tired he, d- he doesn't get tired it's, uh, <laughs> yes, a shout out to smashing Mike um but yeah um I don't know if I can pinpoint a specific moment because I feel like I haven't had it just mm. yet, but hopefully that'll be in the near future. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I get that. Like you, you're happy Maybe with what's be, going yeah. on, but you just know there's going to be more lined up for you in your wrestling career. Um, how was Finland, by the way, wrestling there in another country? It was great. It was yeah. I think that was yeah. That was the first time I'd actually gone abroad and actually specifically to wrestle. So that was uh, a ticking point and mm. I just yeah the country I like it I feel like it's I like yeah I can understand the humor I like the food I like yeah the atmosphere are they really polite uh, over there by the way I've heard this mm, but also quite yeah they've got a very dry sense of humor as well which I really like I kind of like that <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me yeah <laughs> it's which I kind of gravitate to as well but also, yeah, just the wrestling as well. I think because even just a few years ago, um, <clears throat> it wasn't um, it wasn't finished wrestling. I don't think was at a point where like much was going on. But now, mm. there's a lot going on now. And yeah, I only hope to go back in the future. I definitely I would love to go back. So hopefully, that's another. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be back. I mean, I've had um, Regina Rose there on. Um, you know, <clears throat> one of the biggest finish stars in wrestling right now, and I think she's there next weekend. Yes, she is. She is. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. Anna yeah, and then Hannah Taylor. That's it. Her yes. Yes. Back. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that'd be quite. That's gonna be quite pretty emotional for her. Like you know, surviving a stroke, not wrestling for ages, and potentially like maybe like calling it a day. But 
That's another reason Literally, for my wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> that's another match, yeah, that I'd love to even hopefully I yeah, get the chance to see it. Yeah. Um but yeah, she's um can't even imagine, but yeah, that's um that's gonna be good. But yeah, Regina as well, she's uh she's just all over the place. Man. <laughs> just goes, just goes as well. No, I just love the way again you... someone yeah because uh, she used to train um up in Leicester a little bit yeah. um so again when I first started training yeah we kind of like yeah did a little bit together and then I hadn't seen her in years and then only recently we started having like matches together so it's nice just to see the growth as well just like, yeah just I don't know why I found it really funny. Sorry, <laughs> it's just what you said. It, um, but now nah, she's she's like I think she really likes the UK. Now she comes here quite a lot and really establishing herself as well as one of the top female talents um, in the game today. I'm going to ask you one last question. It's a fun question. It doesn't have to be wrestling related. I ask all my guests this at the end of the interview: three dream dinner guests for your dream party. You can make it about wrestling if you want. It's all up to you. You're the host, but. Pick three. It can be dead or alive, fiction, non-fictional. It could be anyone, anyone. But if you can give a brief reason as to why you went in there as well, that'd be brilliant. But you're the host. Go. Um, uh, um. Mate, so probably it's probably gonna change as time goes by, but I'm just thinking like I have You're thinking about the wrestlers that you want to face. <laughs> not even no, no, literally not even wrestling. My yeah. mind automatically went to like maybe have like an eight the angel, the devil, and then just like opposites of the spectrum and then Tina Turner just for some levity. I love it. Yeah, yeah. No one's Why ever said that, and yeah. I've actually, I think I have to give you like some Brucey points for that. An angel, the devil. Like, that's pretty cool, creative. I mean, someone's probably gonna get offended by that. I don't, I don't really care. But I just, yeah, really... <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, you know, people like. Yeah. But no, that, that's that's cool though. That's quite interesting. Angel, devil, and Tina Turner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just to you know, just to have some light heart, just to bring the you know, just bring the emotions down, just to you know, just to have some like levity going on, and just like maybe we can yeah. Sit There's a it. thumbnail there, but I don't think it'll go down too well. <laughs> <laughs> just have like two, yeah. I mean, you could have like a almost like a good omens, and then Tina you know, Turner, just like yeah. No, that's cool. I like that's why I like asked that question. It's your answer. You pick. You know what I mean. And just it opens you up a little bit as well, and just allows people to get more of an understanding. But um, Ronnie, I want to thank you for your time. I know you got things to do this afternoon, so it is much appreciated. And I know this was kind of uh, I wouldn't say last minute, but you know, just the fact that you opened up your diary for me that means a lot. Uh, so if I do bump into you next week and um, yeah, next weekend. I will say hi. I'm looking forward to the show in general. Absolutely, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, if I see you, then no, definitely come up and say, yeah. Give us, yeah, give us, give us all the, give us all the tea. What you, what you think? Absolutely. And stuff, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's it's going to be a good weekend. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so if anyone is in London next weekend, doesn't have any plan, and is a wrestling fan, Coliseum Pro Wrestling, July fifteenth. If you can find them on social media, check them out. You get to see Ronnie as well. And we matched, we, ugh, let me try that again. The match that we spoke about at the beginning of the interview, Livy Grace, they battled before, but this time I feel like something different is going to happen and it's going to be a unique match and a unique contest. Uh, I'm going to be cheering Ronnie Knox, but if Livy is about, then I'm just going to deny what I said. Um, no, she's going to get some knockings. I'm going to knock her out. I'm going to beat her. I'm going to, like, yeah, I'm going to implant, like, imprint. She gets some, yeah, get stamp <laughs> on her, but no, she's gonna get. She's no, she's gonna get it. She's gonna get it. And awesome. if you miss out on that, then that's on you. I know, right? I mean, I'm, I'm cheering you, but yeah, I, I may, uh, you know, switch back and forth. It just depends on my safety at the time and how scared I am. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to have a stand, man. You got to have a stand. I know. That's so, what I did. That's what this podcast like here. 
not in the ring or with the wrestlers behind the scenes. I don't want to cause any drama. Yeah, so just say, yeah, no, Ronnie Knox has got the win. and then Ronnie yeah, Knox Ronnie has Knox got the win. Knock. She's getting the win. He's going to knock her out. Yeah, he's going to knock, her, knock out. her out. And then, yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, you're fine, you're fine. I'll hit to protect it. you if anything goes wrong, so don't worry. There we go, protection. Yeah, Ronnie, I'm cheering you. If the fans want to keep up to date with what other shows you have lined up and just keep up to date with your wrestling career in general, where can they find you on social media? Um, so social media, but yeah, you can if um just to update on matches and stuff, Twitter, Ronnie Knox, um, Instagram, Ronnie dot Knox, and then the I forgot what that underscore is. underscore that that's it. Um, that's no, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't think the word <clears throat> earlier, so I can't say. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> um, there's Fred's now slightly debating whether I now have to like create a Threads account, so. Potentially, not as I'm recording this, but maybe in the future there might be a Ronnie Knox third account. Um, whether I'm in control of it now that I've said it, now uh, we'll, we'll, we'll I think know. you kind of so, there yeah. now, and I think I'm kind of probably yeah. joking. Just you just don't know what's going on Twitter at the moment. I think if, I'll be honest, though, if I didn't have this podcast, I probably wouldn't be on mm. Twitter anymore. I've just only had enough, but it does allow me to interact and you know, um, share, yeah, brand so. It's good exposure. But... Yeah, but yeah, so far, yeah, if any, if you want to keep up with matches and mm. stuff, those are the two accounts. Maybe a Fred's one will pop up um, soon, but yeah, so far, Twitter. Uh, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are the places yeah. to find all you. The, yeah, all the likes, shares, follows, and whatnot. Do it, people. Do it if you can. And if you want to watch this podcast, yeah, you're, you're on Instagram. I am. I'm on Instagram, Twitter. You can find my social media handles in the description below and then keep up to date with what I've got lined up. But if anyone is about next weekend and is attending the show, you'll get to see me and you can't miss me. I look like a peanut. Um, <laughs> uh, I recently shaved my head. I haven't shaved my head for ages. And just, yeah. Peanuts are great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I miss it a little bit, but yeah, I'm just, yeah, now I'm getting dramatic. But if you are about the show, say hi to me. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. But I'll be keeping up as well with Ronnie Knox, what she's going to be doing as well in her career. But Ronnie, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. For the listeners out there, I hope you all have a good weekend. And for now, everyone, take care. Peace. Hello there. I've got a special announcement from my next guest. Hello there, I'm the unpredictable CJ Rawlings, and I am going to be on What Do You Call It podcast. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I heard. Hello there, I've got a special announcement for my next guest. Hi, this is Ronnie Knox, and you're watching Do What You Want podcast. What Do You Call It podcast? <laughs> what do you call it? I'm sure. I knew I was going to get it wrong. What do you want? What do you want? Podcast. I knew I was going to get it wrong. I knew it. So sorry. It's absolutely fine. That's quality. What do, um, what, do, what do you want? Podcast. <laughs> what do you call it? Podcast. What do you call it? I can see it on the wall and I can't, I'm still like, again, I, I, I'm not here today. It's fine. It's, it's not even like late Saturday. We've got Sunday as well. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just, just, just yeah. waiting for Monday. To, oh, yeah. No, I, I, bet, I think you just need this interview to end and then you can kind of get back to normality because I've, I've probably just, I've not helped. I've probably thrown you off a little bit. <laughs>